Hello, this is Mr. Quack Quack, and I have made Pong in Minecraft. So, here it is. This is my Pong in Minecraft right here. Which, I don't think I need to show you it running since you saw it in the intro. Well, single player at least. I can turn on two player. But, this is a single player control right here. So up, down, over here. Start, stop, and this is the AI switch. The AI is very simple, because so the center of the paddle is the exact same move, is the same coordinate y chord as the ball. Therefore, if the ball is let's say here, the center of the paddle is there. So then you got the paddle are those three. So now if I turn it off, I just set the paddle as it would be set in. It. For normal, so if I start it, then turns on it, and I just start getting the machine running. Yeah, it has a couple glitches in the entire game, like that. Those are some glitches that happen, which is really strange. That's yeah, just how it works. So then the ball goes up and down, and left and right, every single frame. And I need to move this guy up. Oh shit, I like that. There we go. Yeah, I got some back. There's the optimization on it where for it, like instead of checking if the ball's in this row, it checks in this one for uh, the AI. Because I had like a glitch where the ball would go into here, like into the paddle, and suddenly like, go up on it, and suddenly it'd be like, instead, it would be like a 15 side X display. Which that would just cause it wear the same pattern continues over and over again. Let's just stop it. The stop but the stop function will go and reset everything. Sometimes it likes reset it up there, sometimes resets there, and it looks like this time it decides not to reset. And that's just how it works. We'll flip AI on and try again. These this area right back here is the heart of the entire machine. Right here? This, this is the clock right here. Just this little thing right here. This turns on the clock. That turns off and on the clock there. And these two circuits, they are the exact same. They are counters. So every single time the clock goes, then either it will go up or down. And the up and down are, is determined by this line right here. If it's a, so no input means it will, let's see, what did it, no input means it will go down, input, up, and this one is the exact same down here. Top one's X, bottom one's Y. This system right, these, this system here will basically go and check if conditions are met to flip it. Very simple. And then right underneath it is the one for the Y. Now, for the X, it's more complex because you have to detect if it can flip it if the paddle is there. Which that is what this, this entire system is for. This entire system right here is split into two areas. One for left, one for right. So, let's do this one, the right one first. Which I think this is, I don't know which side this is for anymore. It's a while since I did it. This is for the right side. So what this does, this is a bunch of XOR gates all connected up. And then knotted right here. So this makes it where it has to equal. So why does that work? Well with an XOR you get output if it's, if one's on the other one one isn't or the first one isn't on and the second one is on therefore we say it is true if we don't get any input here therefore if one of them is not the same we got we get an input here which turns this torch off which means we don't get an input here as you can see those these two here it's not true with those two and that's the same thing on this side here it does the same exact thing then when we go underneath it 
we have our counters right here. Well, our paddles, which the entire paddle system is six counters. It's basically the counters are just counters, so when you press it, it makes it go each go up, and it was set up where it's there, it's different to get each one to show a different point. But then we only take the the output from the second one to display it, which then that gets decoded from binary to which one it is. So right down here, it's this one. It's a very simple circuit to make it be multiple. It goes in here, powers this block, goes to redstone, powers that block, make the repeater go. But it is, cannot go through to the redstone because of soft powering. Very simple. Same thing over here for the person that's always playing. But on this side, there is a difference here. It got to be a way to make turn on and off the AI. It's down here. This is where it all happens here. And also, I'm um, canceling out these as well. So that pretty much turns on and off the AI. Back here is so these side things are just completely routes those up to the side, the side ones. And then you got two decoders here one for Y, one for X. So Y, X. So these decoders, well, they're not completely, they base the one, the true one, they turn off. If there is a one input on one of them, what that does is says that pixel cannot be on. So, also bottom one is the one that is off, and I can't go that way. So bottom one on Y is off, and number 14, well actually number one is off on him, is off on X. Therefore, neither input is there, therefore that one's on, therefore that's displaying the ball right there. It is a simple system, but complex because of the size it had to be. Yeah, that's pretty much how the entire system works. And as you can see, I, you have been using instant repeaters all over the place. They're like the best circuit in the game because they, as what it says, instant repeater. Very, they're very cool. They're very awesome. Now to see how a counter works down here. So I have a counter right here, as said by the sign. So this is just going to reset button. So it just resets it. So this will give a binary number here. So this is the ones digit, twos, the fours, the eights. So very simple, if it has this one and that one, so one plus four, one would be five. So if I want to get that to five, I press it one time, goes to one. Two times, goes to three. Well, not two times. Two times goes to two, then it goes to three. Four. Five. One, four, five. And then down here is if I, let's say I want to bring this down to, let's say three. Now at four. And I need to press it. And now we're at three. So, the system right here. It works pretty well, and then if I just want to reset to zero, it goes right back. Very simple. And this is the pixel right here. This is not my pixel design here. Pretty sure this pixel is designed by YouTuber Matt Batwinks. Yeah. The, this right here was kind of my test to make, see if I could separate these lines here for the entire display. Now let's give a demonstration of how the equals thing works. So I'm going to put in 5 and 15. 5 and 15, they do not equal, so you don't get output. Now let's have 5 
5 and 5. We do get an output since it's equal because none of these XOR gates give an output because all the XOR gates, they are not true. All of them are not true, therefore, make sure this one does not turn off. Alright, so I say it's at the 7. So I'll get one because they're both at 7. 5 and 7. We don't. It's a very simple system. This is this is completely how the collision detection works. It just checks if the y equals the like the y of the pad of one of the paddles equals the y of it, the ball. And then also it checks to make sure it's on one of those two lines right by it so it doesn't just suddenly flip in the middle of it. So that'd make it where it doesn't flip in the middle. But there are some uh, issues with the entire system. I'm gonna teleport myself up. So there's some issues with the system, mainly with the display. No, this is, no thing can be perfect. Uh, it's just not possible. During the intro, you s would saw would see how like even during the demonstration, how like it, if like here, it might suddenly click that one on, and then and then go to there or turn on two pixels and turn off that one. It's mainly glitches with the decoder. The deco decoder. I did my best to make it all synchronous, like going over them, so it, but it still doesn't work that well. It just doesn't. It's kind of impossible to do that. Because like it all has to be timed perfectly. When you get here, this is where it can really start getting out of sync, it's in this back area. When it starts getting really out of sync. And then also within within the counter there can be some errors of it having different like when you have this switch here where it might have both of them on for a second and give a different number. So those are some of the big problems with it. Haven't found good ways to fix it and it's not so that's a big deal. So yeah. Otherwise, most of the system entirely works really good. So, yeah, works pretty well. So this is Mr. Quack Quack, and until next time, goodbye.